What's up, my good peoples? Welcome to the Be Transform podcast, where we're talking about ideas that stimulate wholesome thinking unto identity, purpose, vision, and action. I am James Anderson. With me is Logan Eaton. What's up? And we are rocking it tonight. How's everyone doing out there listening? Uh, out there in the World Wide Web. This is... Um the AM radio station is <laughs> 1945 AM. AM. Not FM. Whoa. Yeah. So anyways, what was I talking about? That you're talking about how I think Ohio has officially become a rainforest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like it has. There's not too many days that go by that don't have a little bit of rain. Yeah, and I think I saw... Uh, one of those brightly colored birds flying by, <laughs> like a toucan. Like a t- <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's I, just b- I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's a sign. <laughs> yeah, I I noticed that. I I don't think that's a native bird. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw a palm tree growing <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. So some of those like rainforest frogs, the really <laughs> bright colored ones. That are the poisonous ones? Yeah, they stick to your window. Mm. A couple of those were kind of of stuck on my window. <laughs> so I, I think it's just a matter of time. <laughs> They're migrating It's a matter of time over. until, yeah, all the, all the um, rainforest uh, livestock or uh, wildlife <laughs> <laughs> show up. The old livestock. Yeah. Yeah, pretty soon you're going to have a chimney pansy <laughs> on your car. <laughs> A chimney, a pansy in your chimney, a chimpanzee. <laughs> chimpanzee, yeah. A chim those chimney are, Yeah, those pansy. are rainforest. You might have a, a tarantula floating in your toilet. Gross. <coughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a weekly occurrence. <laughs> at least all that stuff's happening at my apartment. I don't know what you guys got here. <laughs> Noah's Ark over there. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, n- nothing crazy going on. Nothing crazy going on. We've we've been doing our uh, BT Saturday morning workouts. Yeah, those have been well. Yeah, those have been really well. Mm. Shout out to Steve. Steve from Photography Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that guy. Bacon can film. aces or something. Bacon ace photography. Bam. Or maybe it's filmography. <coughs> Bacon Ace, though, that's the name. Yeah. Steve, he came out, filmed some stuff on a hovercraft, and then took some pictures. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle and Kyle. Kyle and Kyle. We're both out. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, um, Yoga Kyle comes back. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully we didn't scare him <laughs> off. <laughs> we might have. <laughs> we might. Austin was out there. Shout out to Austin. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good. Looking good. It was good. Mm. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Boom. Check out our uh, Facebook events. Yeah, we had some ladies across the street doing some workouts, bodyweight workouts, while the yeah. kids were kind of p- messing around on the playground. Yeah, that was that was good. That was good. Yeah, it's for anybody. Yeah. Anybody that wants to come out and do something sweet. Do something sweet. Yeah. That's we're using that Saturday morning as a way to uh to meet people. So the goal is, is if we can through common interests make relationships, then we can display the kingdom, bring people into what we're doing, share some of the programs we have, and make a difference. Create community. Yeah. 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 So that's exciting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this Saturday. Yeah, got another, some ideas, good some one. variations. Sweet. Mm. Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun time. This is a really fun time. I see Kyle at the gym. I always say hi. I've been seeing him a lot this week. Mm. So that, that's good. It sounds like he works sh- second shift. He must, cause yeah, he's, he's usually in there late. Uh yeah, yeah, like eight or nine o'clock. In the morning yeah. or at night? Not, no, in the morning, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else crazy going on? I don't think so. 
You been reading anything sweet <clears throat> lately? Uh, no, I've been, uh, I mean, Ecclesiastes, uh, um, which is a lot of information. Um, you have to <laughs> read it with an open mind. Mm. Uh, you don't want to take anything the wrong way. Like it's all meaningless? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We could probably talk about that for a long time, but I think it's just like in the when you have a, a whole perspective of I- of like eternity, it's like, yeah, there's, um, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm qualified to like interpret that book. Mm. Well, what, what, what yeah, what, did anything I mean, stand I mean the, out? The big thing is like eat, drinks, drinks, eat, drink, and en- or like maybe it was eat, sleep enjoy your work or eat and drink and enjoy your work but it was like yeah find satisfaction in your work and and he's like if you don't do that and you toil for all these things but you don't enjoy what you're doing or you toil just for the the material things you're you're going to end up at the end being like man that was all worthless so he's like yeah eat drink and enjoy your days enjoy what you do uh and so yeah that that that's always stood out every time i read that book that's the piece that stands out to me is the eat like sustain yourself take care of your family and then enjoy what you do every day because you're not going to get that day back and you don't want to get to the end of your days and look back and be like, man, that was a lot of days that I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't enjoying them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause that's like going to happen. Like you're going to realize like all these, I mean, at the, e- I mean, there's going to be a point where like you come to the end, it's like, there's not going to be another day on earth. Like there's no tomorrow on the earth, but you can look back and see all these days that you did have. And it's like, well, what the heck was I, you don't want to be like, what the heck was I doing? So he's like, if you're doing that stuff for like material things or you're doing it or you don't like what you do, but you're doing it, you know, just because you think you have to or whatever. He's like, it's all meaningless. It's all worthless. You're going to end up looking back and regretting all that. So that's what I honestly t- personally took from it. Mm. But I don't know. There's a lot in there that I, I probably can't interpret. Uh, and just I'm not as wise as Solomon. He had all the wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> But it's definitely not a book where it's like, oh gosh, everything's meaningless. I might as well not do anything. Mm. I might as well just, I might as well just sit on the couch all day and eat, eat uh, um, funyuns, bonbons, yeah, dipped in funyuns, yeah. So yeah, I think I think I used to take that book that way though. I used to think like, well, it's worthless to do anything then, sure. so we'll just forget about everything, just yeah. exist. But mm. that's definitely not what I think it's saying. Or, or yeah, and that's not what I think the purpose of the book is. Do the stuff for the right reasons. Don't do it for the wrong ones. Make sure you're living every day to the fullest. Cause you're not gonna get it back. And and they yeah, are like the rich are no different than the poor. It's like that everyone's working for the same thing, and everyone has the same end result in the end, which is which is death. So there's no way to escape that. So enjoy your time while you've got it. That's that's like the what I took from it but that's what I've been reading what I've been listening to is uh, a new podcast that I found um, which is pretty cool short story long with uh, um, uh, drama from uh, Rob Dyrdek's cousin mm. and uh, Rob Dyrdek the famous skateboarder and the um, I don't know he's like a huge entrepreneur now but his cousin started a podcast he interviews a bunch of business people entrepreneurs and just like uh, self-development people and all that so I've been listening to some of his stuff just when I got some free time and uh, he's had some interesting people on there that have said some some interesting things mm-hmm. um, it's mostly just people he just like gets to know he, 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 he like pulls the story from the people that have you know kind of started with nothing but worked up to create crazy thing so yeah interesting content on there um but yeah uh that's the pretty much the content that i've been uh diving into yeah mm. yeah 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 i like the um in ecclesiastes there's a verse that says <laughs> it says don't be too righteous and don't be too wicked <laughs> i remember <laughs> that one <laughs> And um, and he gives a couple of reasons for them, but it's like, what's fun is it's just kind of like, don't take it all too seriously, right? Like, yeah. you know, and do like, oh yeah. my gosh, I got to do it all perfect to like, 
totally cast off restraint, but it's like, yeah, there's a definitely a middle ground. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I do remember that one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it just you were talking about you know making the most out of every day because it's the only one you got. That's yeah. you know that's like that or whatever. And right. I woke right. Up, I woke up this morning, and um, you know I've been I've been having pretty um, steadyish routine morning routine. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, and I, I don't know. It's it's just you know I'm I'm recognizing the repetitions that I'm doing in terms of like every day okay like i'm getting up and I, i'm doing these things i'm writing my article i'm you know getting into uh this stuff and then you know go do some work and then whatever yeah um and i'm all and it's also kind of like you know it kind of feels like maybe once you start working out you know once you haven't worked out for a while you start working out it's like first, you know, it's going good. It's like feeling good. You're, it's like yeah. gaining gains, and then you're like, oh, okay, I really don't want to, yeah, I don't want to show up, yeah. But it's like, but then I show up anyways, just yeah. because, like, because of the commitment I've made, it forces me to, to, to keep showing up. And um, but anyways, I, you know, I was just kind of feeling the repetition a little bit, and I was like, I just woke up, and I thought, huh, I wonder. I was like, maybe I'll do fifty push-ups. <laughs> and so I <laughs> saw so somebody was talking about doing push-ups in the, in the morning and I was like, I don't and that must've been what triggered it. But anyways, I woke up thinking, Oh, maybe I should do some push-ups. It's like, yeah, it just breaks up the routine a little bit. It's like, yeah. get some blood pumping, get some oxygen in the body. I was like, yeah. hey, you know, I just pounded out some shups and yeah. Got nice. into it. But yeah, the shups, the shups. Yeah, it's good. Just to, you know, mix it up a little bit. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I I totally know what you mean. I I think I was, I'll admit, for like the past, since uh, probably since winter, up till about recently, I've just been going further and further out of the morning routine, mm. like just sleeping in a little bit more, uh, you know, working out whenever, just you know, even if it's seven o'clock at night, just kind of going, and and just kind of you know. I don't know. So, but yeah, recently I tried to g- I tried to do the same thing, switching it back up, getting up at a good time, making sure I get a a routine in the morning done, instead of just you know spending a half hour making breakfast. Like, how can I <laughs> how can I eat breakfast and like how can I get that done in like fifth? Just kind of just kind of seeing you know okay, what do I got to do to get back into more of a, di- a a consistency with the morning routine and and kind of get more stuff done during the day. Um, but yeah, for a long time there. Uh, it was yeah. It was kind of a, I don't know. I don't know. Un, undisciplined. It was like whatever. You know, I'll start start whenever I get to whatever today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, but it's like when you don't have anything that's kind of motivating you, it's easy to fall back into that. So, um, and that's yeah. So like with with work kind of slowing down a little bit, that's what happened. But it's like okay, well I need to I need to go create some work here. I need to you know with this with this job nobody's really telling me what to do so it's like okay well decide to just start making some calls and seeing what i need to do so just just trying to like <coughs> be be a self-starter and get into it and um but yeah i was falling out for a while just getting back into it now where it's more of the routine but yeah i know it, i definitely know what you mean <laughs> but it's like i come to a point where it's like you get frustrated it's like this is not i don't want to do this be this way or whatever so you're just going to force yourself to make a change or 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 get back into the routine but yeah i know i know what you mean yeah yeah what's well that concept where it's like if you keep doing the exact same things you're going to keep getting the same results yeah so it's like if, if if you need like your environment to switch up you know change a little bit then you have to do something yeah. a little bit different yeah yeah <coughs> yeah yeah so yeah that's what yeah, being conscious of okay, what is, why is this not working? What am I? What can I do differently? I think is is huge, because um, yeah, if you just, it's easy just to start fading out, just getting into the, yes, getting into the whatevers. Um, but yeah, nothing's nothing ever like, at least for me, nothing's ever just like, showed up at the front door. <laughs> no, nothing good has ever happened from <laughs> casting <laughs> just getting lazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Nothing good's ever happened from getting lazy. Yeah, yeah. And and things usually start to go downhill, and you can fall into the just like the depression really easy when it's just like ah, you know, whatever. But 
Yeah, you gotta stay busy. You gotta stay active, even if it's just you know doing something. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's what I've been thinking about. Well, so I was thinking about consistent persistence and how that is, you know, taking persistent action consistently over a period of time, you know, creates growth and progress. But, um, yeah, but it's like, it's easy to talk yourself <laughs> right out of, of, of what you committed to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, there's, there's certain things that I've committed to and like I've I've kind of been around the block with a few times that has like solidified my commitment kind of like well you know you know like like the just whatever like the article right the daily article I'm writing yeah um you know there's plenty of times where I'm like oh man you know you know you have an idea of like well you could probably just stop but then I'm like no, if I stop, every, everything will stop if I stop doing that. Yeah. And so I've, I've, <clears throat> I've, I've been through that enough times to where like, I'm, I'm like fully committed to that. Yeah. I sure. think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but then I was even just thinking about like this podcast and like today and I was just like, I was like, man, I don't know. I was like, you know, maybe I was just thinking about what it would look like to switch it up or do something different or, you know, take a break from this or whatever. And it's just like, it's those ideas, right? Oh, you could just take a break. Oh, you could just take a day off. Oh, you could just take it easy. Uh, it's hard. Oh, it's difficult. I yeah. don't have any more creativity. <laughs> I can't see. I can't. It's not flowing. I don't freaking know. I feel like the last one sucked. You know, it's just like you could talk yeah. yourself right out of it. But listen to this, right? right? So here's what's funny, right? So I'm thinking these thoughts like, Ah, you know, I'm trying, I'm, I'm thinking about, did I really commit to this? This is what I'm thinking. Like, can I find my way? Can I find a way out of it? Kind of concept. Yeah. But I was thinking about this article I wrote the other day, which is hilarious, which you can forget. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, I was, I wrote this article called the uh, consistent persistence. Right. And so it, it says persistence is defined as firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. So you continue moving forward, whether or not, even if you have opposition or even if you find it difficult. Okay. So what's my problem? I'm finding it difficult. But so in my moment of difficulty, I'm thinking, okay, I could quit, but it's like the only way to gain progress and growth is to not quit. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. no, but it's hard. Yeah. No, right. <laughs> don't quit. Yeah. No, but you don't get it. Like, I don't have any more ideas. I don't know what else to do. It's not flowing. I just need to take a break. No, don't quit. No, because yeah. here's what happens. It's like there's the people just quit. But the people who don't quit are the people who go on to do amazing things because they've created the muscle and they've grown in maturity because they wouldn't relent, even though it got really hard but they didn't stop. Yeah. Those are the only people who actually do something great. Yeah. Everybody else, you know, it's just like we were talking about. It's like, you can go with some repetition, you can go with some consistency and some discipline. And then when you start fading out, you just, you lose this time. Yeah. And eventually, like you're talking about, you can go into depression because you, you've let go of your purpose. Yeah. But the reason you let go was because it was hard. And it was like, it was also hard to see like, it's yeah. like, I'm not really inspired. I don't really, I don't really yeah. even know what to do. Yeah. Like, so like, there's just, there's all these opportunities to just yeah. talk yourself right out of your commitment. Totally. Yeah. But that's not commitment. It's not. No, I think, uh, uh, one thing I wrote down on, uh, on the whiteboard at home was like, uh, Miles Monroe, I think he said it, it was like, I want to say it was like pressure creates character. I think that's one mm. of the things he said. It was like pressure creates character, talking about like how, like the refinement process of like metals and 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 uh, golds and stuff like that. All that that take requires pressure. Not so. Anyways, that that was the uh, the analogy. But yeah, that pressure creates <sighs> character. It's like if you don't know how to act under pressure or how to like solve things under pressure, then your character's not going to 
to develop or anything. You're not going to be, you know, somebody that can make decisions or, or keep pushing in a direction if you can't under pressure do those things. So, um, yeah, pressure creates character. And I forget what else I was going to say, but, uh, cause it, isn't it even like pressure and fire? Oh yeah. For, yeah. For the, for the, like the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. For the metals. Yeah, it is high heat. Yeah. Well, come, like coming at you from all directions. Heat in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you can't stand the heat, don't cook, but, uh, Stay longer. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, there's also, there's another word I was thinking of that I've always liked. I wrote down that definition a long time ago. Um, tenacity. Mm. And I forget, I was trying to remember what that definition was, but it was like the ability to like hold something firm or like some of the synonyms for it were like, uh, like stubbornness. Um, I have to go back and steadfast. This might've been another one, but like tenac- tenacity is like the ability to like hold something, like not let go of something. Um, yeah, maybe you can look it up, but um, the uh, one of the synonyms was was like I said, stubbornness, which I think was just um, people look at stubbornness as a negative thing, but it's almost like uh, you can look at it in a, as a positive thing too. It's just being like you're so stubborn and and going this direction that that nothing is going to, because the negative the negative connotation of stubbornness is somebody that's that uh, we take it as like somebody that can't change their view on something that it maybe it should be changed but like the positive is like you're so set in a direction that nobody can get you to move or nothing can get you to move right or left of that direction um so yeah i've always liked that word and that definition like that stubbornness is uh i think something that if you're going to do something crazy you're going to do something great you got to be kind of st- you've got to be stubborn mm. and just like i don't i don't really know how this looks right now but i can make some phone calls or shoot some emails out and get some and just do something and just keep moving or read this book about this and so yeah just being stubborn i think is is mm. required if you're gonna go do something crazy but yeah yeah so it says uh the quality or fact of being able to grip something firmly mm, yeah uh, the quality or fact of being very determined fact of continuing to exist <laughs> 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 yeah Something like that. Yeah, so let's see. Um, yeah, so in that persi- uh, in persistence, in the definition, it says this. It says firm oh. or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or op- opposition. All right, so if firm or obstinate. So I looked up obstinate, and it says stubbornly. <laughs> refusing to change one's opinion or chosen course of action despite attempts to persuade one to do so. <laughs> you want me to read that one again? Obstinate is defined as stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion or cho- chosen course of action despite attempts to persuade one to do so. I was trying to persuade myself to do so. Right, you can be the one that's persuading yeah. you to change course. I, yeah, I've, I've been the one doing that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Before. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've probably all been there at some point. And the people that listen are the people, listen to those voices are the people that are um, not pleased with their circumstances every day. Not they're always frustrated. Not Not where they want to be. And always complaining and always wondering what the heck's going on. But, yeah. Consistent persistence. Yeah, consist consistency. Consistent. What's that? That's acting or done in the same way over time, especially as to be fair or accurate. Unchanging in nature, standard, or effect over time. So essentially, like, you, you keep doing... Essentially, it's like the pattern that you keep doing with repetition over and over and over. So it's like those daily disciplines that you know that if you continue to to do these things, you'll get out of whatever, you know, slump you're in. Yeah. And you'll you'll persevere. You know, you'll finally you'll see. But because yeah. you didn't give up, it's like you're going to come. You didn't lose ground where if yeah. you crapped yeah. out and waited until you got some kind of revelation, right? Yeah. Like you would have lost 
Yeah, that you would have lost of, momentum. A lot of days gone. Yeah, you, even when you feel like you're you're not making momentum. Yeah, you're still moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing, <coughs> one of the guys I was listening to talked about uh, manifestation. So thinking about these things that you where you want to be or what you want to do or who you want to be or who you want to be with, like, like focusing on those things and being specific about those things. Like this guy was telling stories, like he was so specific about like what he wanted and, and so focused on that, that like things would just start to happen. Like, uh, like the one that just comes to mind was like, he was talking about financial, uh, something financially one time and relationally. So he was coming out of this, like there's, I mean this, this guy's story is, is massive. Like from the age he was a young kid to now he's just been to so many places around so many people done so many things but anyways he was talking about like how one year he needed like he knew what his expenses were in in southern california and he needed to he knew what he needed to basically live so he would just focus on he's like he set that goal of like okay i need to make twenty five thousand dollars in the next three months or four months or whatever and and uh uh and then he, he was also like uh, his his mom was you know always on him like well you know you're so specific with your your business and your financial goals like uh, what about your relationship goals so he's so he's like yeah you know kind of whatever but um, he remembered this girl that he had a crush on and uh, um, saw her and in, in high school or something like that and they they were friends or whatever it had been a long time since they'd seen each other though anyways he walked into into some store and saw her on a magazine one time for something. Um, and, uh, so he, he, uh, uh, anyways, put that, that picture of her or whatever on his, on his whiteboard or whatever. And, and he's like, that's who he wanted to marry or something like that. He's like, he's like said something or, or wrote something by it. And, uh, um, uh, anyways, uh, ended up like reconnecting with her somewhere, um, by chance and, and like, um, they were they got married eventually and stuff. And it'd been like 10 years since they even seen each other. But like, and then, then like he was one of his one of his friends had like offered him a position in in like a uh, at a job at a, at, one, at his company I think and he's like I'll give you this twenty five thousand dollars sign on bonus if you come <laughs> if you come work with me <laughs> and he's and then he's like the one thing he also was thinking or one of his goals was to have this certain car I don't know what it was but he's like he's like uh, um. Or no, the guy that the guy that wanted him to come work for him was like, "What do we, What do you want?" And so he's like, "I need twenty five thousand dollars." He's like, "Okay, you got it." And then he's like, "I want this car too." And he's like, "I can't." The guy that's hiring this that wants to hire this guy is like, "I can't give you this car." He's like, "No way." And so then the guy's like, "Well, whatever." And and I think he like he like turned him turned him down or whatever th- at first, but then he got a fax on his fax machine like a couple of days later, and it was like the the uh, it was like a sheet that that like allowed you to like pick what the the options of the car that you want so he like he had that <laughs> car that he wanted and he's like he's like pick your options for the car and so, <laughs> so there's all these things like he focused so much wrote them down was specific about them thought about it all the time and it's like those things like he unknowingly put himself in these areas where it like the things that he wanted were there and he and he was able to, to take them uh so that was just something about you know manifesting the things that you that yeah. you want and seeing seeing the things thinking about them writing them down believing that they're achievable and possible and, and it's like that stuff like works <laughs> that stuff happens like it's not yeah it's not hocus pocus or anything it's well, not I feel like because that's what's actually called faith like that's yeah. the principle of like faith yeah because yeah. it's like you know for the most part it's like your self talk or like your 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 ideas of what the tomorrow is gonna be. You know, is it based upon what yesterday was, the problems you had yesterday? Do you picture those same problems tomorrow? It's like, but it's like picture, no, I'm going to succeed. No, but for real, it's like there's going to be a thousand people who show up. I'm going to, you know, it's like, and then if you constantly keep picturing it, picturing it, picturing it, one, it changes yeah. like, it changes your outlook on life because you start to create a new pattern of thinking. But it's like, yeah, because there's a ton of people who talk about that kind of stuff like that. Yeah. Where you just you, there's a, another guy who talks about the mind, and he's talking about like you know you, in your meditations you kind of sit you you think about these things, but it's like you stick around until you feel like you feel your emotions like you feel like you already have it, and so the yeah. co- the concept yeah. is he's like once you feel like you already have it, 
then it's like you have grat you have like this concept of gratitude. He's like, but you don't even have it. You just think you have it. And because you have it, like you, you have gratitude. When part of the concept is like, you don't need anything outside of you to be at peace or to have gratitude or to have joy. It's like you can literally, <laughs> you can find it, you know, inside yourself Yeah. by picturing just in this case, you know, like you're picturing that you have what you want, even though you don't have it, but you feel like you have it. Yeah. But then, you know, the, then they talk about like these people, like it happening. <laughs> yeah. so. And it wasn't like, it wasn't like $25,000 showed up at that guy's port. He had to ask for it. Like, he, right, right, the guy right. was like, what do you want to come work? Right. For and he, so he asked for it. And but he knew what out. he wanted. Yeah. Right. And he was gutsy enough. Right. Cause he right. probably said it a b- the bajillion times. It just yeah. won't come out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I want this <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah. That's a little wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So, yeah, manifestation is huge. Being stubborn in, in what you want, being specific. Being stubborn. I like that one. To write it out. Yeah. Who was that guy's name? Um, some guy's name. Timothy Corncob. Timothy Corncob. It's a guy with the big blue bull ox babe um what (laughs) (laughs) babe the blue ox come on somebody um timothy corn cob anyways he says whatever his name is he says um your obsessions become your possessions Mm. but this word obsession right which also has a bad bad connotation to it yeah but No, I'm, but I mean like seriously, like if you, if you really want to become who you're created to become, if you really want to do the things that you picture in your mind, which are the very things that God actually wants to do, you're going to have to get upset, obsessed about it. (laughs) Not just upset, but obsessed. (laughs) Like seriously, because it kind of, you were talking about it. It's like just because you have a want or a wish or a dream or desire doesn't mean that in the next morning, it's just going to show up at your front door yeah just that concept where it's like because sometimes it's just like oh you know well god would just make it happen maybe or it's like the people who have actually done stuff actually did stuff yeah like (laughs) the reason why it got accomplished is because they started picking up the phone or they started showing up at places and they just they kept doing stuff yeah yeah and yeah right right yeah and, and and uh um yeah obsession Mm. Yeah, because that's gonna that's gonna drive you to do some things that you don't want to do. So you've got to be obsessed, right? Yeah, so that's gotta be kind of the driving force. Because yeah, I was I was sending out some emails the other day, and I they they were some of them were to people that I knew that I don't think knew me, but I knew who they were, and, and they might have known who I was. And I I was one of the voices in my head was like, well, what if this gets to somebody that does know me? And they're like, well, what is this guy? What is this guy looking for? And and like, well, you know. Uh, or what is this guy asking for? And, and it's like, they might they might think something negative about me, but it's like, <laughs> who cares? Right, right. <laughs> I'm going to send this email to as many people as I possibly can. And if one person responds out of, you know, 50, then great. That's yeah. perfect. Then I'm one I'm one contact closer to where I need to be. So, yeah. so, yeah, I don't know. It's just stupid stuff like that that gets in, that can get in your head and, like, slow you down when it's like that stuff is worthless. It's it's so minute. And, and it's like, who is anybody to say anything anyways? Right. So nobody determines what, what you are or who you are anyways. So, yeah, just little stuff like that I've noticed before trying to slow, slow me down. Like, well, what if this person that does know me? sees this or reads this and then like and they think something like well who is this guy and then it's like i don't really care who you think i am <laughs> <laughs> i could i could, I could yeah, really care serious yeah but no it's possible though to because this happens to me all the time you know where it's like in your mind i don't know it's like maybe it's like too much of a conscious idea of what somebody else is thinking or feeling and even just in a hypothetical situation just dumb yeah. this one guy he was taught he, he, i don't know some he's indian he's some yo, yogi person yoga yo yoga mm-hmm. re, yogurt john hancock john hancock the third anyways he was talking about how pain is what the body feels but suffering is what goes on in the mind like mm-hmm. where you can have you can have a past event but you continue to relive that event 
over and over and over. He's like, you're suffering, but you're not even there anymore. You just continue to relive it over and over and over. And it's just like in certain ways, it's like, uh, you know, I find some of those those thoughts. But more and more, it's just like trying to get to that place because he even said he was like, he's like, whether you're whether you're like full of joy, like you're super joyful or you're like really mad. He's like, any way you slice it, you don't want to give anybody the control of those two things. Like you don't want somebody else to control how you feel, how you, you know what you're thinking, feeling, or acting like that's, that should be your control under your control. So whether the situation or circumstances is pleasant or unpleasant, it doesn't have, you don't have to get offended or emotionally involved or caught up in whatever. Right. Which is crazy. Cause I mean, because if you can stay stable and sound and where your your mind, your emotions, your body are all going in the same direction. It's like you can you can accomplish some things. Yeah. Cause even like you're talking about, it's like, bam, here's the goal. I gotta pound out a few a bunch of emails and whatever. Okay. Yeah. Where could I be? But seriously, right. who cares what people think? Like, cause that's what you know, I like, oh, I could call somebody, but they be like, well, I mean, who are you? What am I? Oh, that's awkward. I don't, you know, I don't actually, you know, they don't want to take your call or whatever, but it's like, who cares? Yeah. Because the people who do great things call like they yeah. They don't worry about what other people are gonna think. They just go and do it. Yeah. Or what not yeah. not to say that they're unhindered by that thing, they just don't let it stop them. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. But yeah, one thing um Grant Cardone was talking about in his uh 10x rule book was taking 10x actions like you know, massive levels of action. Yeah. It, it produces new kinds of problems. He's like, look, you could stay and like, you're going to have problems. So you might as well have some new problems, <laughs> <laughs> some bigger problems <laughs> that are produced by bigger levels of action. Or, yeah. Problems that actually produce character. Yeah. <laughs> or right. just like and progress. Yeah. yeah. Little problems that don't do anything. Right. That, that just keep you in a, a negative <laughs> space. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you must have problems that are going to get you somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was watching that movie last night with uh, Jake, that uh, Lone Survivor movie about the Navy SEAL, or not, uh, I don't mm, know if they're yeah. Navy SEALs or whoever, but <laughs> Navy guys. Um, and it was like, I just, just was kind of, they were showing like that, um, a little bit of that. They, I think there was like, it was actual footage of like the Hell Week, so of actual soldiers going mm. through that. And like what's like, it was actual footage. That's just kind of part of the intro for the movie. And then, uh, uh, so I was just kind of thinking like that, like how, how like actually strong the, the mindset of a human being is. And like that whole movie um, about like these guys that go on this, this secret operation mission or whatever, they get kind of compromised by just a happen chance of, you know, in the woods of, of running into somebody from the village they were trying to kind of attack. And so, it's like that okay that didn't go as planned and so like they had to immediately like think of a, a solution here and go through the the ideas of the solution and, and then decide on which one to do like within a matter of minutes like they had to do that um like do we they had these like have you seen the movie yeah yeah so they had those like those prisoners it's like do we kill these guys do we let them go and run and do we do we you know tie them up or whatever and uh anyways it was just like it was just so impressive watching that movie about like the guys that were like, there's actual people out there that can, that do that, that operate that kind of way on a daily basis where it's like, there's, there's massive problems going on around them (laughs) and they have to find a solution and then commit to it or, or it's life or death. And, and like, even like in those, like those battle scenes where it's like, okay, we either stay here and let these guys close in on us uh, with their machine guns or we jump this cliff and sure. like take the injury and see if we can regroup a little bit <laughs> and like over and over it's like these guys just would not like like i think it would be so easy to just be like all right just stand up put your hands up and just like take a gunshot to the head at that point where it's like okay i don't want to i don't want to even do this anymore but those guys were just like to the point where it's like okay no matter if i can still see with my eyes and pull this trigger i'm gonna be shooting this gun yeah and it was just insane like that was like the best part of the movie was just like the mindset 
Mm. It's like it was a, the fact that it was you know based off a true story. It's like there's people that are actually that operate that way, and it's like you can. It's not like it's like that every in our everyday lives. It's not like that, but it's like you can operate on a similar wavelength as people like that to get things done. Um, you know, thankfully we don't have to operate on making those kind of decisions of life or death, but. It, it's it's almost they deserve the same the things that kind of we're doing they deserve the same attention the same kind of going after the, the the intensity of going after them but um yeah just the ability to okay what's the solution what are the options make a decision and then commit to it yeah and then, and then you know act accordingly but i don't know that's just something that yeah i was thinking about last night watching that movie it was it's just like how do you want to operate each day? Mm. But yeah, yeah. I was thinking that that I was thinking about this. I was listening to a watching one of the a video from Miles Moreau, and he was talking about work. And um, yeah, as kind of the, the reason why God created the world and man's job and. God's idea of work and I was just thinking about this concept of if I know what I'm supposed to do like if I know what God requires of me if I know what that is then I can give my whole self to it right opposed to the idea where like this life is a big mystery God's a mystery is a mystery blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all right but the, the problem with that idea is, one, it didn't come from God. And two, we all know that we're, we'll be held accountable for what we do, right? You're only held accountable because you've been given responsibility. Well, you're, you're responsible for something specific. Like, it's, you're not just, you can't just, hey, I'm going to give you responsibility. And you're like, well, over what? <laughs> right? Like, I mean, <laughs> that comes with knowledge, yeah. <laughs> and understanding. But yeah. I was just thinking about it's like, dude, the more I fully like grasp what is required of me, the more I can give myself to it. But like your your yeah. success depends on your knowledge and understanding of what it is you're called to do. Yeah. Because if you're confused all the time, you can't take like you can't take consistent steps or like, you know, you can't live in efficiency. Yeah. Right. Cause you're always kind of chasing your tail a little bit. Yeah. 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 Being, yeah. I think being specific is, is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you don't know, it's just going to cause a lot much more frustration. So, yeah. Well, cause I, there's also like freedom in it because it's like, all right, so if, if our goal is to bring about community transformation so that we can get so good at solving a particular kind of problem that we become known for solving that type of problem. Yeah. Well, then it's just like, all right, so if that's the main goal, then it's like you figure out, okay, what do you need, one, to, or what do you need to start doing to actually start making an impact? And then how can you continue to multiply um, that impact that you're having? How can you spread that out further to have a, a bigger um, yeah. <clears throat> effect, right? Yeah. And then you just start getting into those things. Well, once you kind of have some of these basic goals, then it's like it, it kind of makes your decisions a little bit easier because instead of you're like, well, I don't, you know, should I do this? I know it's going to cost money. Should I do that? Oh, you know, it's, oh my God, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> this is your idea. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's like, all right, is it going to help us achieve our main goal? Yes. Okay. Then the answer is yes. But it's like, whoa, it's like, whoa, I've never done that before. I've never been here before. This yeah. is like, like everything, it's like, I've never, d I don't know. I've never done it before. I've never yeah. been there. I've never consistently kept up. You know, it's like everything's in that, that new uncomfortable place, but that's all where the growth is. Yeah. yeah. But it's like the more clear things become, the more, the better chance you have at succeeding. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just this idea that God's not... <laughs> God's not hiding 
his purpose. Right. Cause I yeah. was, I was thinking about it like this, right? Because, because there's this idea that this life's a mystery and you suck and blah, blah. Right. Like yeah. God's good. And you're supposed to fall. Like there was this sign and whatever, maybe, you know, not to judge anybody's motives. Maybe their motives were better than this, but it's like, there was a sign that said, you know, if you follow God, he'll get you to where you need to be. Like, in essence, where you want to go is not where God wants to go. So if you kind of get over yourself and follow him, oh, then you'll yeah. be where you yeah. need to be, even though that's not where you want yeah. to be. Give up everything that you yeah. hope and dream and, and follow the follow the unknown of like, well, I don't of know what horrible. God wants. I don't yeah, know, but, it's but I'm gonna, whatever it is, it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, I have to go that way. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. And yeah. then it's just a big mystery. The concept is And you're good, probably yeah. going to fail. You're yeah. probably going to suck. <laughs> yeah. And it's 1,000% going to suck because yeah. you're going to fear the whole time. Yeah. All right. So deleting that image from your mind. Okay, if I have a business, all right, which I do, but if I have a business and I, I've got a uh, – I've got some main object, uh, objectives, right? So if I have, so I have a pressure washing business, bam. Our goal is to go and we get jobs. And when we go out to the jobs, we want to clean those effectively, efficiently with quality, right? So we've got a process, mm -hmm. all right? So bam, the, there's a way you set up. There's a way you use the equipment. It's the way you use the, the soap and the wash. And, you know, you walk around the house a couple of times, you double check. We There's a process. All right. So let's just say, all right, I'm, I'm, I want to expand my business for the explicit purpose to grow, right? Mm -hmm. If I hire an employee and I just say, I, I have an interview at a coffee shop, be like, bam, you're hired. Immediately take him to a job site, leave him there, and then I, I take off. Is Did I set him up for success or for failure? <laughs> failure. Okay, now yeah. follow me on this, right? I set him up on fa for failure because I didn't teach him anything. I did not give him what he needed to succeed. So not only does that not benefit me, it does not benefit him and it does not benefit the customer. And long term, if I continue to try to operate like this, that guy's going to quit and you're going to gain a reputation of not being able to do what you say you can do. Yeah. Okay. So my main objective, though, is to grow the business. So right. ignorance is not the solution it's not a strategy yeah so, so yeah so that's contrary to what that popular belief is is like drop what you know and and follow god and right. so get you where you need to be even yeah. though you don't know what it is yes yeah. and you can't figure it out yeah and you should feel bad that you can yeah but try anyways yeah yeah and eventually anyways you circle back to what you used to know anyways Eventually, well, some or people, you just some keep don't. going in yeah. the same people, cycle. Well, sure, because yeah, because yeah. I mean, you're like, yes, because at the end of the day, you want to live a life that pleases God, but then it's like this isn't working. So then yeah. you go into fear, doubt, worry, depression, and this and that, and then you're like, oh my gosh, then maybe somehow you get out of it, and then you fall back into it. Yeah, and if like, you get out of it, <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you get, get out of it, because that's like a that's a, that's a yeah, and that sucks you in. It's a tractor beam trying to pull you in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's interesting because that that video I was watching of Miles, it was hilarious, man. He was just saying, well, he was just saying, you know, <laughs> Miles was funny or the video, like, yeah. Was, well, what he said, I don't even know if I want to repeat it right now, but <laughs> it's like, I'm like, okay, I'm watching this, and I'm like, I'm not crazy. Yeah, I'm like hearing what he's saying, and I was like, I'm not crazy. Yeah. He even started it off. He's like, what I'm about to talk about, like, you know, is might mess with your mind a little <laughs> bit. Like, it's like, or, you know, some people aren't going to like it. He's like, yeah. as with most of the things I say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, whatever. You know, he was, he, he said some things, but then like he started, there was this, um, some surveys that went down and um, he was just saying, that the whole the whole thing was about um it was part one of of bringing the kingdom into the workplace and he was saying that 70 percent of church going people never heard a message about how you should use your time at work to bring the kingdom or like to talk about jesus or this and that and then he's like you know seven over 70 percent of people never once heard a message about 
like vocation, about your job, about how to do it, how to become good at it, or just uh, different ideas, right? So there's this big concept that the whole point of life is to go to church, right? <laughs> and then the rest of your life is pretty much useless, right? Your job's bad because, you know, you, money's bad and this is bad and this is what, whatever. He's like, all right, but then we're going to try to get into evangelism. So you do mass evangelism or pew evangelism at from church or like street evangelism. He's like, that's so dumb. Why would you go looking for people when your work environment puts you in access to people? This kind of concept. But hmm. the whole concept is that well, I think there's just there's what God's plan is not what is normally taught, but it's like it's not it's really not that confusing. And once you finally like hear about it and you're like, yeah. oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But I mean, the fact is that the goal is to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. That was the reason why God created the world and mankind was for mankind to colonize earth so that it looked like the kingdom of heaven right yeah. and that's still the goal so jesus came who then preached the kingdom and then displayed the kingdom right and in john he's like he's talking to his, his disciples now he's like look like the father sent me he's like if you don't believe my words at least believe the miracles, believe what I did, right? So not only did he talk about the kingdom, but then he demonstrated the kingdom, the proof of the kingdom. And so yeah. Jesus came to then set up us. He, he was the pattern that we are then to follow in, right? And so the goal is to preach the kingdom and to demonstrate the kingdom it's like the the purpose is to infect this world colonize it cause it to to you know replicate the function of heaven on earth yeah yeah so it's like if you got ideas that smell like the kingdom the answer is yes <laughs> if you want to go and rob a bank the answer is probably no. That's <laughs> not right. Like the, the answer is no. It's pretty kind of like it, it can be pretty that cut and dry in terms of like, yeah. Oh, is this idea from God or is this idea <clears throat> from me? Or, well, you know, because you come up with good ideas and people are like, oh, that's just the flesh. No, it's not. Maybe it's not. It's yeah, like, oh, your motivations yeah, probably suck. No, maybe they don't. Yeah. Maybe the people you're listening to freaking suck. Yeah, who are, they're not God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All I'm saying is this is you've got to read the Bible for yourself. Yeah. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Definitely don't. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And that, that whole concept of making money too. It's just like, you don't want to, you don't want to think that something is that something you want to get into. It might make you a lot of money but you don't get into it because you don't want to make, you think making money is bad or something, but then look, but then get to the end and be like, God was like, Hey, I had all this stuff. For you. Right. It was okay. To do Which that. like, well, but then it's like to the fulfillment of your potential. Yeah. Like, well, let's look at it like this. Right. So here's here. Here's a, a perfect example of Jesus in the workplace. Right. So talking about your job. All right. Jesus. Right. He's, he's teaching this massive crowd, and this massive crowd is crowding him. And so, but it's like him and the shore, right? So he hops into a boat, right, with uh, Simon, who's eventually called Peter, and maybe a couple other guys. They had been working all night long and caught no fish, right? So they're, they're in the boat. Jesus is like, bam, hey, I'm hopping in. Why don't you guys paddle out a little bit? Give me a little bit of space. And then he's talking to these Guys, all right. So he finishes up wrapping up, talking to this crowd. All right. He enters into the workplace. These are fishermen with a business of catching fish who were out all night and were unprofitable. Yeah, right. Yeah. Jesus says, hey, why don't, why don't we go back out into the deep and cast your nets? They're like, dude, we were out there all <laughs> night. But because you said so, we do it. Right. So they go out there. They chuck their nets over. 
and they've got so much fish that the net's breaking. They call their other boat. We're at the workplace, right? They've got their other, their team boat. They say, guys, you got to come <laughs> out here. They start filling up the boats, all right? You're talking about fish after fish after fish until somebody's like, dude, the edge of the boat's almost under the water, right? Like, we're about to sink. These guys are going nuts. They're like, dude. Peter was like, you got to, you got to, like, we're not worthy to be in your presence. Yeah. Why? Because he demonstrated the kingdom of heaven. It was the most profitable day they'd ever <laughs> experienced in their life. Yeah. After the after like a no profit day became the yeah. most profitable. Yeah. And because of that demonstration of the reality of how the kingdom of heaven functions, it caused these guys to leave everything and follow him. Yeah. Like that is a good example of how you should function in the workplace. You should one dominate. And then because you do, people are like, holy freak, what do you, what's the deal? Like yeah. you gain yeah, influence yeah. because you know what you're doing. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. I never thought of it that way. I guess. Yeah. My, uh, um, yeah, that's really awesome. My first thought was when you said the, they called the other boat over, I, I pictured another boat kind of off in the distance and, and then them yelling over like, hey, we, we need some help. And that guy like turning on his motor <laughs> and kind of speeding. <laughs> <laughs> little, uh, one of those little motors in the back called <laughs> those little onboard yeah. motors. Yeah, I, I had pictured that. So I'm kind of coming over towards the boat. <laughs> no way, man. They would paddle it out. Yeah, kind of long, kind of got confused with the time period, but um, but then the second thought was like, yeah, those guys, I, it's it's easy to relate with those guys thinking like, okay, you know what, we just we've casted our net in like probably like fifty times today, <laughs> right. and we didn't All get anything, yeah. and and then but it took them like just having a, even just a little bit of faith to be like fine, and throw the net out. And, and then, and I think it gets that way. Like when you're pursuing stuff, it's like, all right, I've done all these things. Mm. I've, I've done all these things, read all these things. And it's like, there's, it's producing nothing, but it's, and that's but like, if you, you pray about that and you, you, you kind of, um, yeah, I mean, like you pray about that and you believe like that something is going to happen and you just, you cast the net out like one more time. It's like, eventually something is going to like, uh, you know, even after, a time period of no no fruit it's like you keep casting that out and eventually something is gonna gonna happen um so yeah it's just that little bit of faith even just enough faith to throw the net out keep throwing the net out one more time one more time one more time and uh uh but yeah those are my those are my thoughts when you were talking about that um yeah i feel like that that and just everything we're talking about too it's like when you're going and like you know you're trying to talk yourself out of <laughs> continuing I think, you know, especially it's like when you're, when you're seeking God and you're asking for like, you know, a fresh word of encouragement, it's like, dude, just give me a little, Something. just, just <laughs> come on, you're just, thing. come on, you're yeah. here, you're freaking here. Let me yeah. just give me a little bit. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but just like when it doesn't come, what do you do? Yeah. You remember what he said last time. He's like, what's the last thing he said? Or what's, what's something he's, uh, he, you know, said and keeps saying. Yeah. Like it's remembering, right? Yeah. That's where I went back and I read that article of consistent persistent, which I wrote like four days ago <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, remember, like, so in those times when you don't, when it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's, you're not in the groove, right? You're yeah. like, I'm feel like I'm out of the groove, but I'm still, I'm still moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. But like, what do you do? Or, or even if it's like, it's getting hard and you're trying to talk yourself out of it. Yeah. Right. How do you, how do you become obstinate? How do you become stubborn and grip yeah. hard and continue to remember what you're doing? Remember why you're doing it. Continue yeah. to visualize, get into the visualization of, no, I'm going to succeed. No, this is what I, every time I've been in a situation like this, it's never, it's never lasted. Right. Like I've, this is, the, I've been in places and situations like this many times before. And every time there comes like a point of relief. Yeah. And it's like, and it's in that moment that if you stayed with it, you're really glad you didn't crap out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can, you can bring the things that you want into existence or you can leave it up to chance. 
and yes. I I don't think I can leave anything up to chance anymore. <laughs> I don't want to leave anything up to chance no. anymore. Yeah, because you, you, like you literally have that choice every day. Like uh, it's just crazy. You can bring it into existence. It's gonna take some effort, or you can just leave it up to chance and yeah. kind of hope for the best. But that usually never works out. <laughs> yeah. No, you were given the ability to put forth effort. Yeah. To put forth effort. One of the things Miles yeah. was talking about, he was talking about how, so God worked for six days and then on the seventh day rested. And so he said, all right, that's going to, that's going to be how it's going to be. You're going to work for six days and rest for one. He said, all right, which has the highest, what, which has like a bigger F and F, F what? <laughs> emphasis? <laughs> emphasis. Yeah. Which has the bigger effing emphasis? Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. I get Sometimes my mouth doesn't work. But, um, <laughs> emphasis emphasis um the thing he told you to do six times or the things he told you to do one time a week like it's the things you're supposed to do six times a week oh yeah, right okay. like that's the bigger like is yeah, was, was yeah. to work and i'm not just talking about your job man i'm talking about your purpose i'm talking right, about the reason right. why god created the world and mankind right to manifest the kingdom of heaven it's just like he was just talking about god values work more than he values rest and everyone but everyone emphasizes like you gotta make sure you rest on the seventh day or at least on the seventh or day. A, or, or at least seven days straight. Is it yeah. Sunday or Saturday or what <laughs> or is, is it? it? Monday yeah, through so Sunday. Th- the emphasis is always on the rest. That's interesting because I've always heard the emphasis being on the day like God rested. Everyone needs to rest. Slow down. Slow, Slow down. down. Yeah, but that's it's why like nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's like nobody ever emphasizes like Get there's up, six good days to do yeah. something. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. And yeah, it doesn't have to be like you go to a nine to five job for six days a week. It could be you do that for five days, maybe. But that seventh day or that sixth day is like, what are your what are your priorities? If your priorities are, you know, starting a business. OK, what do I need to read or talk to? Who do I need to talk to do that? Or if it's going to school. OK, what do I need? Do I need to fill out an application, study, whatever? You know, even if it's even if it doesn't have to be eight hours, even a day. It's just work at what you're doing for a time on that, that six day or maybe it's just, you know, spending time with your family and, and working to develop your, your kids or, or, or whatever, spending time with your family to help your family. It's like that, that's part of the purpose. And then it's like, um, you know, that, 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 that seventh day can be just that time where it's like, okay, let's just chill out for a day before we get back into it. But yeah, it's, it doesn't have to be like anything crazy, like where you got to work 12 hours a day for six days a week. But, um, do something, yeah. Get into the get into the purpose. Get into stuff. Don't give your mind a a huge gap of a break, and then end up getting lost. But yeah, that's interesting. Focusing on the putting the emphasis on the six days of of creating something. Uh, well, yeah, but then you you get into Jesus, and then uh, everybody was Pharisees were all freaking out. I was like, how come you're working on the Sabbath? He's like, dude, my father's always working. <laughs> Why shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. work, right? And in John 17, Jesus is praying and he's saying, I finished the work that you sent me to do. It's like the only way you can know you finished the work is if you knew what the work was. <laughs> yeah. And then how to do it. Like you knew yeah. the, what the process was. That's yeah. the only way you can know you were done. Yeah. All right. You had to know what it was. All right. And then Jesus said, you know, as the Father sent me, so I send you. Yeah. To do what? The work. Of what? The Father. To bring the kingdom. Display the kingdom. Yeah. Do it. Like a freaking master. It's just fascinating. Yeah. The ability we have to become like experts in whatever like our gifting is like our call, whatever our calling, whatever you want to call it, our purpose. We have each of us has the ability to become a master. Yeah. And the obligation to do well, to, to have success in that. That's an obligation. I don't know if it was, yeah, maybe it was Grant Cardone or, yeah. or Miles Monroe, but he's calling like talking about like success as an obligation. Yeah, I think it was Grant Cardone. Like success is an obligation. Like he, um, it, you're obligated to, to do well at something. Right, and yet, but you have to have the right definition of what success is. Obviously, we know it's not just money, but it's like you have the obligation to excel at what you were called to do. So, yeah, well, he was talking about Cardone. He's talking about well, essentially, it's your ethical duty to be to be successful in the sense that it's 
you've been, you were given all this potential and it's your responsibility and duty to realize it. Yeah. Yeah. God doesn't lose. He doesn't create losers. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, but crazy. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And so miles says, you know, success is based upon what you did compared to, compared to what you could have or should have done. Yeah. That's success. Right. Which again is realizing your potential. Yeah. Yeah. But there's work to be done. Yeah. That, that necessitates everything that you are, right? It's, it's not everything you aren't. It's <laughs> that work that you were created to get into has to do with everything you are. It has to do with the entire, like the fulfillment of your life. It's the best part of your life. It's, it's the reason why you would get obsessed because it, anything you're going to persevere in long term and have consistent persistence, you actually have to want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And G- Jesus said, Hey, he said, you remain in me and my words remain in you. You ask whatever you desire, right? Desires a longing and a craving. I have to have what it is that I want. He said, then you'll ask it and I'll give it to you because it's to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, yeah. proving that you're my disciples. You're so you have to succeed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Obligated. Yeah. Yeah. You got a boat. You've been, it is said further down, he says, I appointed you to go and bear fruit and fruit that lasts. Yeah. Appointed, like responsible, commissioned. Yeah. 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 Your duty <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. You got a lot of good duties going on. You got a lot. You got a boat and a net. Boom. Just keep on, keep on throwing her out there. Yeah. Yeah, and everything you do, man. Be obsessed with Get bringing obsessed. in a big, uh, a big load of fish. Yeah, yeah. Or walk onto somebody else's job site and bring in a big <laughs> load of fish. <laughs> Jesus, he he didn't yeah. only walk into their workspace, but he like did it better than they could. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's somebody you're gonna listen to. Sure, you're not gonna listen to somebody who's like. Walks in 10 minutes late, has a bad attitude, doesn't right. have any money. Be like, guys, let me tell you how to change your life, you know? <laughs> right. Bro, or you're you should mess. do this. Yeah. Or you should do that. <laughs> yeah. No, but somebody who comes on the scene and blows, you know, the biggest catch you've ever had in your life, like yeah. calls it big bam, let's go do this. And it happens. That's people are going to get on board. People are going to get on board. Yeah. yeah. It's like you did what? You did what? Exactly. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> that's called, that's freaking yeah. called influence, by the way. Yeah. Because you know what you're doing. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. And if they follow you at all, like if they do, you know, if you like, look, if you do this, this and this, this is what will happen. You yeah. know, it's possible to know things like that. Yeah. It's possible to be so versed in what you do that you can guarantee success. Success and failure are both predictable. Mm, yeah they're predictable and we've been created to succeed which is why jesus said look i've appointed you to bear fruit why because that's what he did what he did he said look even greater things than these then greater things than what i did you will do jesus did a lot of things but it's like dude come on get into it yeah 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 yeah, it's really, really interesting. But I think in everything you do, man, in your purpose, your vision, with persistence, consistence over time, right? You create growth and progress. Just make sure you sprinkle on a little obstinance, a little tenacity, yeah. a little yeah. stubbornness. Yeah. Refusing to relent. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't let people determine what, what's possible. Stubbornly, stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion or chosen course of action despite attempts to persuade one to do so. That's commitment, my good peoples. Obstinance is in commitment. I will not be persuaded to change my mind. Yeah. Right. The decision 
before you make commitment, that's your that's your time to weigh the cost. Like, oh, should I get into this? Should yeah. I not? But yeah. commitment, once you, but seriously though, once you discover like, oh, no, this is my purpose. Yeah. Obstinance is what is required. Yeah. Tattoo that on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> get obsessed. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. Because, freak, you're created to be epic. I mean, nobody was created to fit in. Like yeah. the light of the world stands out on purpose. Like yeah. a city on a hill is not easily hit it, but that's on freaking purpose. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to fit in. Yeah. You're not supposed to hide in the corner. Yeah. You put a light on a stand high up and it casts light and everybody benefits. Yeah. That is the value that is in every single one of us. My good peoples. Until next time, peace. Guys, thanks so much for sticking around. If you're new to Be Transform, make sure you subscribe and then hit us up at teambetransform.com where you can find everything you need to live a life that says all day, I keep it cultivated. If you're not sure what that is, make sure you check out the video and then join the movement. Until next time, peace.